So let's talk about how we get to convert from molar concentration to molar concentration. So we know molar concentration stands for, we can actually use a small letter M to denote it, which of course means uh, the moles of the solute divided by the kilogram of the solvent. And then on the other hand, molar concentration is moles per liter of the solution. So there's a difference here. Here it's kilogram of the solvent, and there, there is the liter of the solution. Okay, on top, we're referring to the number of moles. Of course, for the molar concentration, it's capital letter M, which is actually the common, uh, commonly used one. Okay, so we'll consider two examples to just help us understand the concept behind uh, the conversion. So let's take it, we have uh, 8.01, okay, small letter M, which indicates molar concentration of sulfuric acid. So the question is, taking or given that the density of the resulting solution Ores. So our density was 1.354 grams per milliliter. Okay, taking that to be our density, we need to find the molar concentration. Okay, so how do you find the molar concentration? So one thing that we know is that the molar concentration where we want to go the units are moles per liter okay now where we are starting from we have moles per kilogram of a solvent okay so we need to ensure we know how much of a solvent we add so the simplest way is to take an assumption that we add a kilogram of a solvent so that would mean that where we are starting from, we have 8.01 moles of the sulfuric acid in a kilogram of solvent. Okay, so that means that at the start, we already have our number of moles. So the only thing that we need to determine here is now the volume of the solution. So how basically can we find the, the volume of the solution? How can we find the volume? So since we've been given the density to be 1.354 grams per milliliter. So now the milliliter is a volume. So if we want to find, if we want to get to a point where we find the volume, we need to ensure that we get to find the mass for the solution. Since we already have a density, if we find the mass of the solution, we will be able to find the volume. Remember, density is equal to mass over what? Mass over volume. So if you have the mass of a solution and the density, you're able to find the volume. So our goal is to find the mass of what? The mass of a solution. So how do we find the mass of a solution? How do we find the mass of a solution? Okay, so one way is, since we know the moles of the solute, which is the sulfuric acid since we know the, the what yeah we know the number of moles of that solute we can basically get to use the molar mass to find the mass right so 8.01 moles of us sulfuric acid now the molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98.0768 I believe you know how to find the molar mass. That's not something that you should have challenges with. So grams per mole. So you can see that the number of moles will basically do cancel out. So what you're going to get is the mass of the solute. So the mass is 78, 785.6 grams of a solute. Now we need to find the mass of a total solution because the density we're given was the density of the solution. So how do we find now the mass of a solvent? 
Now the mass of a solvent from the start we took an assumption that it's a kilogram. So kilogram, if you take it to grams, you know that the kilo stands for 10 to the power 3, so we have 1000 in grams. Okay, so if we are to find the total mass, we need to add the two. So adding the two will give us 1785.6 grams. So we found now the mass of the solution after finding the mass of the solute and the solvent. The solvent was an assumption, the solute was calculated using the number of moles and also the molar concentration of sorry the molar mass of sulfuric acid okay so now at this point since we've got the mass and the density so we know density is equal to mass over volume so if you have to make the volume the subject volume becomes mass divided by the density so this mass divided by 1.354 as our density okay so after dividing of course the grams will cancel out so the volume that we're getting is 1318.76 the units of the volume don't forget you get from the density in this case milliliters okay so now we've gotten the information that we needed we needed the number of moles and also the volume now the volume is needed in liters so milli stands for 10 to the power negative 3 so task times 10 to the power negative 3 now in liters so that is our volume then we divide it into into what into the number of moles which were 8.01 moles with an assumption of a kilogram of a solvent so grab your calculator there and then just try to divide so the value I'm getting is 6.07 6.073 in what? so actually it's 39 which makes it just 4 now the units are molar concentration Okay, that's how we can easily convert from molar concentration to molar concentration. Maybe for the sake of practice, try to practice. Just try out twenty one point four molar concentration of hydrogen fluoride there. Okay, so here take the density. So whenever you see that, that denotes the density. You take the density of the resulting solution to be that. Okay, so how do you basically get to find the molar concentration? Okay, so 20.01 grams per mole is the molar mass of hydrogen fluoride. Fluorine is about 19, hydrogen is about a 1, so if you add them, they give you that. So this information is enough. So one thing that we need to know is where we are going is we are going to molar concentration. So molar concentration it's moles per liter. Okay. So we need to find the number of moles and also the volume which is in liters. So one thing that we know from the start is if they have not given us the the mass of the solvent, take an assumption it was a kilogram. So therefore what we are trying to say is we have 21.4 moles of our solute divided by a kilogram of the solvent. You need to know that. I'm emphasizing that the kilogram is denoting the solvent and then the moles are denoting the solute, which in this case is hydrogen fluoride. Okay. So now, on the next step, we need to now... Since we can see that we already have a number of moles, we need to find the liter of a solution. So how do we go about that? So we can find the liter of a solution using the density. So density we have. So if we can find the mass of the solution, we're able to find the volume of the solution. Okay, so how basically can we handle that? So since we have a number of moles, 
for the solute and we have its molar mass which we can get from the periodic table we can find the mass okay so we can find the mass of that solute by multiplying the molar mass by the number of moles okay so grab the calculator there 21.4 multiplied by 20.01 so we have 428.214 grams so that is for hydrogen fluoride now we need to find the total mass for the solution so now we took an assumption that for the solvent it is a kilogram so which is like a thousand grams so if you basically get to add the two the total mass we are going to get for this solution will become a thousand four hundred and twenty eight point two one four grams so we have our mass for the entire what? For the entire solution so we're getting closer and closer so we can now pull our density of the solution so the density of the solution is that so in this case would have to divide by the density so the, the milliliters will therefore go on top and then we we'll divide by the density so that the grams can basically divide there so the 1428 divided by the 1.101 the answer I'm getting is 1297.2 so that is in milliliters 0.2 milliliters now at this point we are ready now to find the, the molar concentration molar concentration we understand that the number of moles which were 21.4 moles divided by the volume in liters so if you look at the 1297.2 which is in milliliters we can multiply by 10 to the power negative 3 in other terms we are dividing by a thousand to ensure that it goes to liters okay so 21.4 divided by that so the answer i am getting here is 16.5 molar concentration so I believe you've understood how to convert from molar concentration to molar concentration by just looking at the units.